Okay folks, as you're checking out some shots in the SDO AIA of the coronal mass ejections that came off of the sun yesterday, it occurred to us that most of you at this point are pretty good at noticing when the GOES X-ray uh, shows that there's a solar flare and then you're good at checking the SDO uh, to see where the coronal mass ejection happened, if there was one, and then using stereo and SOHO to see if it's earth directed. You guys are getting pretty good at that, so uh, let's have a quick little uh, look see about how we can be ahead of the KP index and NOAA's announcement of geomagnetic storms. You can be a little bit ahead. Uh, before we go into that, when we showed you guys the video yesterday, uh, the SOHO hadn't been updated. It is now. Uh, you can see the coronal mass ejection coming out of the southern hemisphere followed by the larger one coming out of the uh, northern hemisphere. And there is a halo there so we can assume it's earth directed. The way we confirm this is with the CME Evolution Enlil Spiral. There's one at NOAA and there's one at NASA. We prefer this one at NOAA because it'll show multiple coronal mass ejections. Right there is the filament eruption that happened a couple of days ago followed by the, uh, the bigger double mass ejection that happened yesterday actually is going to catch up to the first one and hit the earth sometime late on the 11th or the 12th. Now while we do prefer this NOAA one, uh, the NASA uh, evolution, CME evolution nemo spiral has that third uh, chart over on the far right which shows the earth from behind looking at the sun and as you can see we are going to get clipped by this CME. Oftentimes this is the best way to do it. So let's say you don't want to wait for NOAA to announce a geomagnetic storm or you don't want to sit around and wait for the KP index to go up. Well, you can come over and check the HARP uh, meters actually. Now I know you guys all love the induction magnetometer and it is pretty good for a few things, but on the top left the Fluxgate magnetometer uh, measures the horizontal disturbance in our geomagnetic field. And they have these wild spikes just before geomagnetic storms, before the KP index spikes, before the auroras are seen. Um, and so this is a good way to be just a little bit ahead of the game. Now. Once you start to see uh, auroras, once the KP index spikes, come over here and take a look at the VHF Rio meter. And now the blue detector symbol up top is the detector of uh, these charged particles or the radiation, and the red is the ionospheric absorption. We want to see the red spiking with the blue, and we have been. It means the ionosphere is absorbing a lot of the electricity uh, and the charged particles, and we can see that on the total electron content, first of all, uh, we have been way above normal for a while now. Uh, averages between uh, 20 and 25 on these charts, but we've been averaging uh, 25 to 35 for a while. And a uh, a little bit more recently, uh, we've been up uh, near 40 and above. If you'll remember, uh, we showed this chart a while back uh, of the F layer. Now, when we talk about the ionosphere is is absorbing all of this stuff, that's that's a good thing. But it means that our ionosphere is really getting charged up, um, as if you rubbed a balloon on your head uh, for a while. It's got a lot of uh, static ele electrostatic electricity in the air. Um, this here is the F layer, uh, if you'll remember, the Earth is down below. Uh, this is about 150 to you know, 500 to 800 kilometers uh, above the surface of the Earth. So this is well above where planes fly, uh, well above chemtrails, all of that. But this is where that absorption is taking place. And we can tell that a lot of solar plasma is getting through the magnetosphere because um, we're having strong geomagnetic storms, so it's being affected. We're seeing uh, strong uh, ionospheric absorption. That was the red spikes on the VHF Rio meter. High total electron content, and if you'll remember the critical frequencies here in these uh, F layers, which are the maximum frequency uh, wave that can be bounced off of uh, these layers of the ionosphere back down to Earth, they're high as well, which signifies a strengthening of the ionosphere. And where does all this extra electricity comes from? Well, it comes from the sun. The solar plasma is getting through. Uh, we have seen these critical frequencies in the F layers be really, really high recently on both the F1 uh, and the F2 layers. Uh, we've seen the F2 layer spike up above 400 every couple of days uh, and for a couple of days in a row now, uh, which is much higher than normal. Normally, um, we are you know, well under 300 for the most part. And uh, just recently, we had uh, I don't know if you remember, this is the highest ever critical frequency recorded in the F1 layer. Uh, you can go back as far as you want, and it's like that. So we have some coronal mass ejections uh, coming at the Earth, folks, and uh, hopefully uh, we will know beforehand, uh, a little before the KP index spikes or there's a geomagnetic storm announced. Uh, hopefully you guys learned something today, and uh, please ask us any questions if you haven't. Be safe, folks.